Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast is looking at buckle mini screws and is by Ramesh Sablok. I really like this lecture by Ramesh. He looked at one of the most popular sites for TAD insertions, why it's so popular, what can be done to increase its success, but also looked at some of the biomechanics. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and it may not be 100% accurate or representative of the original lecture. It is the independent work of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. So going back to the lecture, so Ramesh started off by describing how mini screws in the buckle aspect were described over 25 years ago from Korea. It's the most common site for insertion and that is in between the first molar and the second premolar. And the reason being has two main factors. The buccal bone thickness from buccal to palatal, but also the interradicular distance. Starting off looking at the bone thickness, well the greatest width in the entirety of the maxilla is between the first molar and the second premolar. It's between 10.2 and 11.4 millimeters, according to Poggio 2006. The interradicular distance arguably the more important factor when it comes to TAD insertion. How do you avoid hitting the roots? And again, the distance between the first molar and second premolar yields anatomically the greatest distance from 3.2 to 3.5 millimeters, giving a space to clear the interradicular distance. And this is by Lee from 2009. What about the height of where we insert the mini screws? Well, actually, if we go to cervical or to near the gingival aspects, there's the, there is the least interradicular distance. Between the first molar and second premolar, it's only 2.7 millimeters at a height of two millimeters. And this is what was termed the safe depth, which we'll come back to in Ramesh's lecture. When it comes to going towards the anterior buccal aspects, actually the interradicular distance increases quite significantly the more apical we go and they become a safer location to aim for. Ramesh gave a tip of ensuring that we've leveled and aligned prior to placing the implants, and this maximizes the interradicular distance through those, safe, through those processes. Next was the safe depth that Ramesh proposed. This was at what depth should you go to place the mini screw to be in this safe zone, where you can go into radicular, knowing you're maximizing the anatomical advantage the site can yield. And he spoke about the four to six millimeter distance, ensuring that we are at the greatest interradicular distance and maximizing the bone thickness as well. Ramesh spoke about the angulation and described a 20 to 30 degree angle being ideal for interradicular TAD insertion. The advantage it gave, well, it meant that there was going to be greater cortical plate engagement but also the tip of the screw itself will be further apical, where the interradicular distance is even greater, allowing for even greater margins of error to then take place. You mentioned by using an angled insertion, we can therefore have a longer TAD inserted. This was interesting because when I attended Professor Porig Fleming's course, he actually spoke about using shorter mini screws to reduce the insertion course. So clearly there's still differences of opinions as to whether we should go slightly longer or slightly shorter when it comes to TADs. When it comes to insertion of it, he described the mucogingival junction. And this is a term that has been coined by Sebastian Bermgartel of the zone of opportunity. It's ideal as a position to insert, as it has soft tissue favoring it with respect to being in keratinized tissue, but also maximizes the interradicular distance anatomically. He described the point of insertion actually starts off perpendicular and then goes to a 30 degree angle after a few turns. There's a biomechanical side which then Ramesh went on to describe, how the extraction of third molars has been advocated when it comes to use of pendulum appliances, non-mini screw types. But it's interesting as I look through the research, actually when it comes to TADs and TAD biomechanics for class two distillization, actually Lee's paper from 2009 shows there's no real difference in the extraction of third permanent molars when it comes to bodily movement. The advantage of TADs is that they allow us to also achieve a vertical vector as well. Now, typically fixed appliances are extrusive, but by positioning our TADs more apically, we can therefore get an intrusive effect as part of our correction. He spoke about the classic class two case, where we're going to retract our upper incisors, and even with mini screws to the arch wire, at least we're still gonna retrocline the upper incisors. His tip for this was to place a long hook anteriorly and then use it to the mini screw. This allows the center of rotation to be at the center of uh, resistance for the upper anterior teeth or actually slightly above it. Therefore actually talking the upper incisors and achieving palatal root talk. He put the concept forward of the biological width of TADs. Why should we have an area 
either side of the tads before we get to the roots. And it's similar when it comes to the use of dental implants. He advocated having a 1 to 1.5 millimeter clearance of the periodontium from the dental, from the mini screw through to the actual PDL space itself. In conclusion, it was great to hear Ramesh run through why and how buckle tads have been as popular as they have been. It relates to a quotation from Moyes Symposium from 19 years ago, which described how mini implants would change the course of orthodontic care and lead to significant changes over the next 10 years. Though it's been 20 years almost now to the date, it has continued to be innovative within our field of orthodontics. I'm excited to see what the next 10 years will offer when it comes to use of mini screws within our field. This episode is dedicated to the late Dr. Anam Humdani, who died at the age of 29, was a dentist from London, both active in the local community and at wider within the UK. Please do give support to her charity page. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.